This Rob on the Road is sponsored by the Sacramento Metropolitan Arts Commission. Spectacular art transcends time. I do see landscape, but I see so much more. Explore the artist studios of Sacramento's Kim Squalia and Micah Crandall Bear as their creations take art into the future. Plus, artist Patrice. You've never painted before. No. Are you sure? And filmmaker Jeffrey Fong. We're keeping this very tight. On Rob on the Road, the future of art. And now, Rob on the Road, exploring Northern California. An artist leaves a stamp from their soul for all time. And I tell you, someone who does that in such a magical way is this lady, Kim Squally. Good to see you, Kim. You too, Rob. Thanks for having us here. Thanks for coming. What a beautiful studio, by the way. Thank you. So, Kim, First of all, your art, talking about art for the future, boy, this is it. What a medium. Thank you. Tell me about Thanks. it. Thanks. Um, so I use resin and um, layered paint. So I start with a panel. I paint a solid color generally. Um, I'll layer a resin, which is a clear, it's an epoxy resin. It's kind of a, a liquid plastic. Um, and I will put a layer of that, another layer of paint, another layer of resin, until I get to where I feel like the painting is finished. So you're talking about all these layers. Do you even know how many layers you can use in a painting? The most I've done, I think, is 26. Wow. But sometimes I'll do three. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it depends on the design. Now, I am not an artist, but when I looked at your creations, I literally just thought, wow, they suck you in. And I had no idea that that was resin also in there. You think of paintings, and I don't think of resin, but you do. Yeah, I do. I Well, when I first started doing this, I was um, I was trying to do encaustic, which is a, um, a wax. It's a, a wax mixed with turpentine, and it's really, it's the most difficult um, thing to use, I think. And I just wasn't quite getting what I wanted. Um, in graduate school, I had a professor that said, I, I saw this stuff at Home Depot, you should try. And it was what you would put on furniture or a bar top. I no longer use that material because it's not um, UV resistant, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it, it started doing something that was sort of mysterious. It was giving me these cast shadows, flattening out the paint so that it, you couldn't tell if it was paint or paper, or um, it was creating this space for this paint to live in. Mm, um, I like that. And that, that's, that's, that's what I have become addicted to, is these, these spaces in the resin um, that I feel like they're sort of alive. They're still alive. They're encased in, you know, like a, a bug in amber. They're kind, of <laughs> they're kind of encased in the resin. I love that. And I love, because you just put it into words, and that's why you're the artist is that you look at these pieces and it does look like it's alive. Isn't that weird? It's the magic of the resin, it really is. Um, I, I have tried to, I still once in a while will, will play with canvas and traditional painting, um, but there's just something about this material that is so integral to these specific designs that um, I feel like it brings the mystery to it. And that's kind of my number one goal in making these paintings is, for them to be a little bit mysterious, to, to, for there to be some wonder in them. You know, you just said something that I can't help but pick up on, and you said it's the magic of the resin. Uh-uh. It's the magic <laughs> of you. It's, it's a mix of both, maybe. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll take that. Did you create this? Did you invent this combination, if you will? Um, you know, I, I think that I did. I, I Starting with the wax um, and then finding the resin, and then it just sort of grew from there. Um, but before I had done this layering, I had never seen anybody do it before. I haven't either. I look at them, and I, I think that they're interesting. And I, and I was really lucky starting out because I started um, I went to grad school in Texas, in San Antonio, um, at UTSA, and right after graduation, I was picked up by an amazing gallery. And you still have a huge following in Texas. I do. I'm really lucky to be in Texas. You know, speaking of <laughs> Texas, Kim, 
Neiman Marcus has a huge squalia. They do. They've been squalied. They do. They, they're <laughs> one of my clients, and I have pieces in six stores. Wow, good so for you. Good. And so the buzz of Kim Squalia is taking on a national trend. How does that make you feel? Um, it's, it's so exciting. It's such an honor to be, for anybody to part with their hard-earned dollar, to buy something that you have made with your hands mm -hmm. is such an anomaly these days. Um, Good point. So I, I feel so lucky and honored and blessed that this is what I get to do. You know, I look at these and I see such wonderment and I see such uh, outer space creativity that comes to earth. What, what would you say for your work? I don't really know where exactly these images come from. It's definitely influenced by nature. Um, I love going to the aquarium. That's probably my favorite place to go and get inspiration. I love electron microscope photography. When I'm painting, I think about things like, like wind or water or um, if this is a, a, something that lives in the deep sea and it's a, you know, one of these little strings that I paint. Is it floating? Is there a current? Just kind of these ethereal thoughts. Um, people will look at a piece and say, oh, this looks like something um, in the galaxy. Or they'll say, this looks like something in the Marianas Trench in the deep sea. And I love when they see those things. And, and that's a common thing that people say. So I feel really satisfied when people say that. We walked through your house to come out here to your lovely studio to do this interview. And I was stopped by this showstopper behind us that was on your living room wall. The last time we were here in your studio, it was filled with your creations that you were shipping all over the country. Why did you pick this one for your home? Um, because nobody's bought it yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, I thought that was going to be some big, deep answer. <laughs> no, but it's really fun. I have this one spot in my home that um, there's always a piece there. And it's just, it's sort of the revolving home gallery. Um, and if there's a, a piece that I don't quite know how to finish, sometimes I'll, I'll put it there and live with it for a while. I heard that Northern California is home to more artists, more working artists, making a living than many other places in this country. Does that surprise you? Not at all. Not at all. It's, I'm inspired every single day. Just walking around the park with my dog, um, every, all the plants that grow here, the way that the light changes with the seasons, the fact that uh, we have the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful coastlines in the world, mm -hmm. and we have great museums, and there's so many things to be inspired by here. Plus, if there's a, a lot of artists working, we're all inspiring each other. I've been soaking in this time with you, and two words that you have said have risen to the surface, risen to the top of the resin. <laughs> Pleasure and inspiration, and if I could describe your work and you, it would be that way. So thank you, Kim Squalia. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, great to see you here you. in the artist studio of this woman, Kim Squalia. You will not believe what we found inside of this warehouse in Sacramento. You can't help but walk in this room and say, wow, the artist studio of Micah Crandall Bear here making one of his masterpieces. Good to see you, Micah. Hi, Rob. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Great. This, as I said, wow. Big you space. walk in and it just takes your breath away. Your beautiful creations. Tell me about your artistic style. Well, my artistic style is basically I'm creating paintings that kind of bridge the gap between abstract and landscape. They're a little more color field, I think, uh, which is, you know, often paired with abstract painting. Mm -hmm. But I, I like to incorporate what could be interpreted as horizon lines. Horizon lines. And I see that lines 
are part of your signature creation. Absolutely. Why, why is that? Is that part of landscape? Visually, I like the way it looks. I like the way it makes me feel. It, it weights the painting. I'm a very linear painter. It, it feels good, you know, it, I, when I see a pa painting done and it, it just, it makes sense. One of the things that blows my mind, Micah, is I look at these paintings and I don't see any strokes. I'm, I'm trying to hide my brush strokes, yes. How in the world do you hide a brush stroke? I, I, and why? Well, um, I can't tell you why, but I like the effect that it gives to the piece. And it kind of makes people wonder, well, is that being sprayed? Is it spray paint or what is it? And, um, and I, I enjoy that very much, hearing that from people, because it means that I've done a good job hiding my brush strokes. You just had a gallery collection here in Sacramento, you sold out the gallery like that? Pretty much, yes, yeah, sold out uh, pretty close to in one night, yeah. In one night. Yeah, it was very exciting. I'm, I'm still a little, little speechless about it. You mentioned to me how supportive your parents are of your endeavors as an artist. What role have they played in creating the artist's hand here? Just that, being supportive. I mean, it's not every day that you go out and quit your job and say, you know, I'm gonna try this. and. 100% supportive the whole time. And, um, you know, my father especially, he, he is actually a photographer. And, um, and that's partly where I got the idea for my, my Polaroid uh, frames. Right. Painting them around uh, the, the paintings. And um, it resonates with people. So I, I kind of have him to thank for that. Get technical with me. Talk to me about how you do this. Sure. Uh, yeah, I do use a little bit of oil in my, um, in my pieces. They're, it's a solvent, a stain, like oil and water, they don't necessarily like to go together, but it, when they do, it gives me a very great kind of dissipation. You can see the separation here. Mm -hmm. And it's just a nice little effect, and it's not throughout the entire painting. Uh, one of the things I love to talk to artists about is where in the world do you get this from this? Uh, exact, or is it from here? Exactly that. Well, yeah, I mean, we all see places and we all have, you know, these photographic landscapes in our mind because we've traveled and we've, you know, we live here in California and it's a great place to be. But they're not really coming from any specific place. It's just an idea. Is California an inspiration to you? Without a doubt, yes. Most of my work, I think, has always has an element of, of that coastal heritage, absolutely. So let's dive in and look at some of your paintings okay. here. I love this table and I love that everywhere you look, you see a different phase of Micah Crandall Bear. And then we have this stunning piece here. I mean, as you said, you cannot see any strokes. Yeah, they're very well hidden. And is there a sheen on this? There is a high gloss sheen. There's a high yeah. gloss, okay. Mm -hmm. And then look here at this one, and I love the linear feeling of this one. It's almost like this is the birth of an entire new collection, is it? It really is. You know, I'm, I'm experimenting with new things, highly metallic, reflective paint, a lot of pen work, and a lot of tape. And in this one, you see your line work which yes. as we talk about is as a staple for you and it cuts right through there and brings the focus? Um, yeah, uh, partly focus and but it also acts as a, uh, a component that's not in focus. Really? So it almost, you know, this line here kind of, it looks like it's moving, it's going very fast. So maybe you're, you're in a car and everything's blurred because you're going so fast and then something back here is more in focus. Your work, you know, when you walk in this room, you go, wow. I mean, it just, this, I can't believe we're just inside of a, a tin warehouse because we're literally in the artist's canvas in here. And your work is so peacefully energetic. Oh, good description. Does it feel that way to you? It does. I, and I, I've never been able to pinpoint why but um, it is, it is very peacefully energetic. I, when I collect work or, you know, can buy a small piece from an artist I respect, I like dark art. I like, 
moody, you know, dark pieces with dark tones or, um, you know, distorted figures. I just, I'm drawn to that. Mm -hmm. And um, I like sad songs, you know, I'm drawn to that. They make me happy. But when I create, I just, I almost create the opposite. You know, I, I just have to say, we talked about this earlier, but I do sense a calmness from your work. And after getting to know you today, I can see where this peaceful energy comes from because you yourself make quite a statement. Thank you very much. All right, Micah, good to see you. Too, Rob. Here inside your Sacramento studio, the artist, Micah Crandall Bear. And as we look at the pear here, right, we can see it's got sort of a ball shape down here. See, it's very malleable. It's very, we should we apply be, this to life. We should. I think art and life are very much in the same parallels. Art is literally coming to life here outside of the artist studio of Patrice here in Sacramento. Good to see you. It's nice to see you, Rob. Thanks for coming to my studio here in Oak Park. Yes, it's absolutely beautiful. And what a perfect day to paint plein air, you say? Yes, plein air. Plein air is when you go outside the studio rather than work from a photograph inside. And so you're face to face with nature, trying to capture something of the moment. And I'm watching the moment literally come to life here on your canvas and it amazes me how we're right here on a city street corner and you are creating the beauty that you see in front of you. Exactly and I love uh, urban painting, urban landscape painting and my goal as an artist is just to find something ordinary and see if I can bring out the beauty that I see there onto my canvas and share my vision. P-A-T-R-I-S. Tell yes. me, is that your real name? No, it's not my real name. My okay. real name is Patty. I uh, had a tragic accident in my life when my mom passed away from cancer. Oh, I'm so and, sorry. Yeah, and it was, it was really hard uh, as I watched her on her deathbed. And it was after that moment that I started questioning my own purpose in life. And so for several months, I just kept asking that question to myself. What do I want my life to be about when I'm on my deathbed? I don't want to look back and, not, and regret not taking a chance on a dream. And my dream had always been to be an artist. And so about 1998, 99, I think, is when I took my first class at City College. Really? So, mm -hmm, yeah. so this, you learned how to paint. I learned how to paint. I did. And I took art classes in high school. It was a very small town in Columbia Falls, Montana. Mm -hmm. So our art courses were um, limited. Did you always have the gift? I was always creative, and my mom encouraged that. Mm. Yeah, she always encouraged that creativity. So as kids, we were very creative. We did 4-H, we did the whole thing. So how quickly did the gift grow and uh, become, my gosh, a full-time job? Yes, well, it's been a lot of um, hard work, <laughs> a lot of studying and a lot of learning. And I consider myself a lifelong student and I still take classes and I still learn and, and whatever I can to continue growing and developing my skills. I saw you teaching in there. I jumped in. You taught me how to paint a pear. <laughs> yes. As you can see, I've never painted before. <laughs> but I guess my question to you is this a learned skill? Can you teach these students of yours? And you bring in teachers from all over the country. Can, yes. can this be taught? Uh, I think there is a certain degree of skill that one can learn, absolutely, yes. There are foundations, there are principles, there are some basic building blocks that anyone can learn, given uh, a good teacher. Yeah, I absolutely think there is some degree of art skill that can be learned by everybody. Meshed with some emotion. Emotion, passion, and perseverance. <laughs> and. And really, the perseverance for you came with persevering, not just through learning to paint, but through the tough times. Through the tough times and watching, yeah, watching um, just my mom, my mom's life. She was a beautiful person. You are highly collected. Your pieces make statements. Your beautiful sunflowers, your camellias, the Sutter Butte. Mm -hmm. So many famous, iconic symbols of our area you have captured in a way that no one else can? Well, I think uh, I paint from my heart. I have to feel it and I have to connect with it. And 
there's an excitement in deep in my soul when I'm painting, when I'm really engaged in my painting like this. I'm really feeling alive and engaged and it's, it's from my heart. I am always looking for life lessons. I believe that life teaches us lessons and yes. you being an educator, now artist, mm -hmm. what lessons did you learn through the loss of your mom and how do they still live on in your art? I think one of the lessons I really learned is that if you have a dream, take a chance on it. And yeah, it was scary. I was scared to death <laughs> to give up my paying job, my paycheck, to become an artist. But my heart was just crying out to be some kind of creative, something creative. And so, you know, I really thought about it. I thought long and hard, and I really think if there is a dream you have, if you believe in it, and it's within you, and it's not going away, you got to take a chance on it. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I didn't want to get on my deathbed and look back at my life and think, darn, I wish I would have really taken a chance on that dream. Wow. And now I really feel like I'm living in a, living my dream. I feel so blessed. I have this wonderful studio here and we can offer art classes for other artists to come in and learn and study and grow. We have community meetings here sometimes so it serves the community and it's just been this really beautiful thing that's happened here that not only I, I paint but being in my community here and then also the greater Sacramento community. I find it very interesting that at the time you lost your mother, you were deeply involved in the revitalization of this area. Yes. Now it's booming. Yes. Has this art revitalized your soul? Definitely, most definitely, yes, yes. And art is my life, yes. I, I think if I couldn't paint, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> and because I'm such a believer in education, that's why I love being able to offer the classes and the workshops and to have you as a student. That was fun. <laughs> I never thought I'd take a, a painting class. My mother did it and she did something beautiful, so maybe I'll give her mine. <laughs> you can do that too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. What a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, here at your beautiful studio in Oak Park on Rob on the Road. Well, Northern California is home to some amazing artists, and that is who we have found for you today. This guy, a fierce filmmaker and a trendsetter in his own right, Jeff Fong. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, thanks for having us out here. Oh, for sure. Thanks for coming. And you guys are right in the middle of making a, a film, mm -hmm. and this is all your creation. Tell me about it. Uh, well, this is like a, a very short little sketch that we're trying to do. We're trying to make it like a, a, a comedic zombie apocalypse. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's better. This film is in progress. You're shooting it now. You recently finished a film that you got to see on the big screen. Yeah, yeah, a couple times, yeah. It's uh, called Rue. Uh -huh. Yeah, we actually shot out here and in a lot of other locations nearby. Mm -hmm. And right now we're putting it into a lot of festivals. Mm -hmm. We filmed it several months ago. It's about this very nice, kind, uh, slightly awkward guy who's in a family of assassins. And they're trying to make him become one, but he doesn't want to. I'm not an assassin. Well, you will be. I wanted to do something that could uh, focus on Asian Americans in leading roles, because mm -hmm. um, I see a big lack of that right now. I didn't want it to be very stereotypical. You know, that's one of the worst things that's going on right now with minority roles is that they, they're not really leading. They're not really emphasizing their true talent. They're just kind of focusing on stereotypes. So I wanted to um, give leading roles to Asian Americans that were just leading dramatic, slightly comedic um, parts that you don't get to see too often. I love that, and I want to just dig right into that because it sounds to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that that is a focus of your work, that you want to help change stereotypes. Oh yeah, not only just stereotypes, but anything I can possibly make a benefit to or a, a difference in. You Explain. Know? Uh, I think film's very powerful. Um, you're able to talk to a large audience and you have their attention. Whereas, you know, you could be out speaking anywhere, people could walk right by, but if you, you're making a film, people are paying to come in and sit there and watch what you're saying. So it's a very powerful tool to be able to speak. 
I love that you're using your platform of filmmaking to try to enhance the greater good. I, well, why not? <laughs> I mean, I feel like uh, if you're able to have a passion and you love what you're, you're doing and you can also be able to help in a way, but in a very strategic way. Leading by example. Yeah, yeah I think so. Like having a good tactic with how you try to approach the subject matter, I think is the most important thing. I mean, it's very important that I was creating a story that is a good story too. <laughs> you know, I think um, we're in a time where we're focusing so much on technology, on special effects, on gadgets, you know, so much flashiness and, uh, that a lot of people are probably, uh, are tending to stray away from the most important part, which is the story. I, I tend to go with stories that are about self-improvement, self-revelations, um, improvement, <laughs> uh, but not just like in your face, just happy-go-lucky, you know, it's like, the core of it is trying to better yourself and then characters either do or they don't. And what I love about that message is, is that you're right, everybody goes through struggles and trials and tribulations, but when you can take that and use it to help someone else get through, and in this case you're doing that on camera, mm -hmm. I can't think of a greater thing to do with your life. Yeah. Here we are with Thanks. Jeff Fong, wonderful, talented filmmaker and director here at his Sacramento home. I'll let you get back to work, okay? All right, thanks. All right, hit it. <laughs> it's good. To order a DVD copy of this program, call 888-814-3923 or visit robontheroad.org. This Rob on the Road is sponsored by the Sacramento Metropolitan Arts Commission.